Hi folks, this is Tony at Travel Scoot again. Today I'm going to talk about removing and replacing the electronic controller, which is essentially the brains of the Travel Scoot. It is uh, the component that distributes your battery's electricity to the driveline, to the motor, to the on-off switch and the throttle, and conditions the signal for the throttle response, in other words, your speed. To remove and replace the controller, you're going to need the following tools. The 3mm Allen wrench from your toolkit, and a small pair of wire cutters to cut the tie wraps, not the wires. I'm going to explain in brief a quick check you can make of the controller if you ever have a, an operational problem where the scooter won't go. Uh, for example, if you have lights on the uh, on off, or rather on the throttle display, but uh, you've got no power to the rear wheel. What I'd like you to do is the following. Tip the scooter up so the left rear wheel that houses the motor is off the ground. Turn it by hand and just make a mental note of the resistance that you feel. Next, disconnect the motor cable from the controller at this location. There are two wire ties. Uh, you're probably going to need to cut one of them. And disconnect this 9-pin plug. Then turn the motor again by hand immediately after that and see if there's any difference, any noticeable difference in turning resistance. If there is, that would indicate that your controller may have a defect. You can proceed with the removal of the old controller uh, starting with the following step. Reach in here. Uh, at the apex of your so-called three-way joint and remove the junction box cover. All you need to do is push forward on that little latch. That will expose your electronic connectors from the throttle and from the on-off directional switch. Next, you will remove the Velcro straps and cut the cable ties. There is no cable tie on the middle stay, just on the front and rear. After that, you will want to cut the cable tie that holds the controller to motor cable in the front. You're not necessarily going to need to cut the one in the rear, but let's cut that one if we can. And of course, discard the cable tie. Your next step is to, be, is to remove these two Allen head screws using your 3mm Allen wrench. The next step is to disconnect the controller cable from the motor cable. Uh, this may take a little bit of strength because this is a 9-pin weather-tight connector that is pretty snug, but it comes apart like so. I might as well take this opportunity to point out something uh, that's really, really important. Uh, when you go to reconnect the motor cable and the controller cable, it is vital that the two white alignment marks are in alignment. Otherwise, you will bend the pins on the 9-pin connector, and that is an expensive replacement. Uh, they can't just be bent straight, and this uh, cable can't just be replaced. You'll be looking at a motor replacement. The next step is to remove the controller cover screws. There's one down here, one down here, and that's what you need your 3mm Allen head wrench for. All right, and in the final removal step, uh, here comes the fun. You're going to need to push all of these wires through the small hole and work the old controller out of its niche, if you want to call it that, out of its uh, in installation location. Start by pushing the little programming pigtails through. Uh, they, look, they do look different depending on model of controller. Pull upward on the housing as you do this push through the motor connector, and last, feed your harness through the hole. Now you've removed the entire assembly. Remove the controller from its housing. This is your battery connector. Please note the location of the tang that helps align it. Uh, I'll show you a couple other reference points. It's also vital that the black and red wires are in the proper location. The red wire will be towards the inside of the scooter, and it's marked number one. And obviously, when you plug your battery in, that has to align with that. Once you have that out of there, you can remove the entire controller as a single unit. Okay, let's just assume you've got your new controller now. We are just going to install the new controller pretty much in the reverse order of removal. But we will show you how, that, uh, how you do that instead of just saying, do everything backwards. Take your controller housing with your battery connector facing upwards. It's also very useful to give it a few twists so you have a bit of a pigtail so you don't wind up with a wad of wire getting in the way of your installation. Insert it 
gently into the into its housing squarely. As you move it in there, insert the battery connector into its receptacle with the tang down, in other words with the red wire that's numbered number one towards the inboard side of the scooter. Slide it in place. Slide your controller into place. Now beginning with your long wire tie, uh, long harness rather, insert through the hole. Next up is the motor connector. Through the hole it goes. And next up the programming connectors that are not really essential at this stage. That's actually for factory adjustment. But if they don't go through the hole, they will obstruct the housing. Okay, now we're in place. Your next step would be to insert your Allen head screws and engage the threaded holes in the housing. Get them started by hand. If you get one started, do not tighten it yet. Wait till you get the other one started. Now take your three millimeter Allen wrench. and tighten the screws. All right, your next step is to reconnect the controller cable to the motor cable. This may be the most critical step along the process of removal installation. You wanna make sure, like I said earlier, that those alignment marks are across from each other and push together. The problem here is uh, because of the resistance of the actual connector, you're not gonna feel the pins engaging and if you get them misaligned, you're gonna bend them and that's an expensive replacement. While you're here, you might as well take one of the cable ties. We usually furnish a handful of these. Loop it through here. Through the upper hole. Tighten, snug it up a bit by pulling on it, and cut it flush. The next step in the process is to reconnect the controller harness with the throttle and the on-off reverse forward connector. There's nothing you can uh, really do wrong here because the, uh, your power and forward reverse connector is wide while the throttle connector is slightly more narrower. Uh, the only thing you have to pay a little bit of attention to is that you get the trigger, latch, and lock aligned. Uh, you cannot connect these incorrectly, uh, but if you were to force it brutally, you might damage one of the pins. And then you've got more work on your hands. Push them together, wait for a nice firm snap. This would also be a good opportunity to apply some electrical contact spray to clean up the contacts on your on-off and uh, throttle control connectors. and then we will place it in place. We're gonna take the junction box cover, hook it over the back edge of the aluminum structure. See if we're pinching any wires and just snap it back into place. As simple as that. Your last step is simple enough. Just strap your controller harness in place alongside the so-called trailing arm. You are gonna to wanna to install a cable tie in these two original locations in the front and the rear. It's as simple as that. Uh, needless to say, before you get everything installed and tight, you should do a function check. Make sure that uh, the scooter operates with your new controller. Thanks for watching and happy scooting.